here. Welcome to another video with the Interactive Immersive HQ. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do this simple audio reactive animation. Uh, we're going to mess with some SOPs and I'm using the standard derivative sample file and we'll use this audio analysis tool to create something reactive and you can use these techniques in this video for your own projects. So let's begin. So as always, let's start with a clean network and let's add a circle sop. The circle sop, I'm going to have it to be viewer active and in wireframe mode. And if you press P, you'll see that this display option window will come out and I, it's helpful to kind of see the amount of points it has and I'll have the division to be 14, and now you can see it has less points. Afterwards, I'll add a transform SOP, and I'll also make this wireframe mode by making a viewer active and pressing the W button. I'm gonna copy these two and paste it, and then add a copy SOP, and pipe these two in the first and second input. We don't see anything happening right now because we need to get wireframe mode and you'll see that we created this pattern. And what's pretty much happening is they're copying the circles and all the points on the second circle. So we can mess with the different divisions and you see that it changes the pattern a little bit. And we'll play around having the audio uh, mess with some of the parameters, including having the snare uh, change the vision to having um, the high or low to mess with one of the uniform transform. And you can have the other one messing with the other transform. Great. So just giving you an idea of what we're going to do. And I encourage you to play around with other of the parameters. Great. So we have this. Let's add a null. I'll make this wireframe mode and add a geometry. Let's set up the render. So I'll add a render top, a camera, And I won't have a light because I'll use a line material. And I'll pipe this line mat onto the geometry. Great. And this render top, I'll change the resolution to be 1280 by 1280. So it is a square. Let's have some rotation um, in this geometry comp. I'm going to add abs time dot frame onto the RZ. Um, after the render top, I'm going to add a null and call this out and make this viewer active. Um, awesome. I'm going to add a background by adding a transform top and the background color the alpha to be one and the comp over background on. Let's mess with the line map be before we get to the audio. So the line page, I'll have the line near color to be white and also the line far color to be white. The points, I'll turn on draw points and I'll make the color to be like this pink color. We don't see anything happening because the point multiplier, uh, size multiplier, we increase it. Great. Awesome. And then point far color, I'll also, let's do it also the same pink color. Great. So we have this happening. Let's start adding the audio. Um, right now, these two 
Now they're centered. Awesome. Um, let's add an audio. Use an audio file in. And for the case of this tutorial, we can just use the standard um, audio. Can do an audio device out. Then we can hear it. And then to make sure that we're on the same sound. Turn this off. I'm going to turn it off often in a tutorial just so um, it's not playing all the time. And we're going to open this palette. In the palette, in the tools section, already it's highlighted here at the audio analysis, we're going to use this palette tool. When I started a Touch Designer, this was not here and kind of have to build our own audio analysis um, tools. And in this tool, if you go inside, I encourage you to go inside and see how this is set up. So we have a audio file that is piped in. So um, I'm going to add a null after this and call this audio in and then pipe this to the device out and then pipe this to our analysis. So if we want to swap an audio, it's easier to just swap in an audio um, this null rather than me piping it twice. So over here we have the audio that's coming in here and down the chain you have the low, mid, high, the kick, sneer, spectra, uh, spectral density, and you have the different limits, logics, and um, here's the different containers of creating the UI. Here you have the tool and right now we only see uh, this low on because that's the only one that's uh, active. You can mess with the container itself or you can mess with just the parameters. Um, so as you see, if I make this viewer active and I press the mid, something's happening, you press the high, something's happening. And you can also see over here, you're turning it on and off through the tool. And um, same with the kick, snare, and rhythm. Um, I'm going to make this viewer active off and I'm add a null. And you can see with the null, we have a, um, you can see the channels as data on its own. I'm going to make this audio on, lower the volume. You can see how it's reacting to it. This threshold over here, that's also over here, it can make it less sensitive. So as I creep this up, this low isn't as intense. Um, for this tutorial, I am going to just use a low, a high, and um, a snare. So low, high, snare is a three that I'll mess with. Um, so I'm going to select the low, high, and snare individually. And let's add a select. And the select, I'll just choose the low. I'm going to copy and paste this and have this to be high. And the last one to be snare. Awesome. So we have these kind of set up. I'm going to add a math after each stream. I'm going to mess with the range. And most likely we're going to add a lag afterwards, but I'll first do a merge. Merge all of these three back together and add a null. And I'll call this audio react. Cool. So we have the foundation of the audio reactive um, data. I'll put this off on the left side. Off on the left side. Great. Um, cool. And let's kind of see what are different parameters we want to mess with. So uh, I mentioned I would want to do a circle, um, mess with the division. So um, 
what's the lowest I want. So it can have like six and go up to 24 or something. Um, the snare, I want the low to be, the range to be eight and the high to be like, I like that, 21. Cool. Awesome. And I can rename the snare to be division two because this is the second one. Great. So we have that first one set up. Now the transform, we can mess with the size of the transform. Um, can see the lowest we want it to be, be 0.25 to be one to two, one two. Cool. Um, so 0.25 to two we can always mess with this a little bit more, and I actually want this one to be a reverse of um, the like a negative size of it. So let's first put this to be one and uh, let's mess with this one. So um, maybe two, same 0.25 and two, but rather than having a two range of 0.25 to two, have the range to be two to 0.25. And I'll rename this to be um, scale one, and this to be scale two. And let's first just pipe it in and see what happens. It's gonna kind of be quite uh, sporadic because uh, we don't have any lag on it. So it might just be flashing and I guess this will be my disclaimer if you are um, sensitive flashing that you should um, do with caution. Yes. Uh, I have this be viewer active and I'm going to just drag this division over here. Maybe we can just do it one at a time. See right now, because if we see what the snare is happening, it's just going zero to one, zero to one, zero to one. So right now it's just snapping from 8 to 21, 8 to 21, and that's what we're seeing right now. And if we have this audio on, that's what's happening. So uh, what we do is add a lag. So let's add a lag afterwards. And I'm going to change the P zero to one. And yeah, now it's a lot more gradual. Cool. Um, and let's do the transform. Do the scale one. And again, it's also quite um, abrupt. <laughs> um, this is uh, cool. And let's see, in the low, we also add a lag. Let's copy and paste this. Um, great. Um, and right now, this low, you see that it's actually not getting to one. The range right now is zero to one, but the low, the high is kind of like, 0.1, I think. So um, we can mess with the scale. What happens if we put 0.1? And let's mess with the low threshold. leave that for now. Um, I'm going to copy and paste this lag for the second thing. 
and we can add a lag at the very end but i also want the option to mess with the lags that they're not all the same but i'm gonna pipe in um scale two on here Something different cool and in this high let's see it's also like 0.1 so I'll change the range. I don't like it. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, we can mess with the different um, parameters if you want to have this threshold more reactive, a bit less. Um, and also play around with the camera. So if you want it to be more zoomed in or zoomed out, you can make it so you don't see the edge of the circle. But I'll keep it back to five. And let's mess with some of post-processing. Nice. Okay. Um, I'm gonna live with this for now and let's add some feedback onto this. So after this render, um, I'm also gonna make this not interactive in case it's kind of intense for some viewers. Um, I'm gonna add a feedback top. And this feedback, I'll make a feedback loop by adding a cross. And I'll pipe this on the first input, this on the second input, and I'll um, decrease this by, mm, maybe let's do point 0.1. Great. And afterwards, I'll add a comp, pause it, and I'll pipe this into the transform. Awesome. And um, this cross, have it connect to the feedback. Great, turn this on. We have this kind of feedback ghost, but that's not what I want. Um, you can mess with this. You can either have just the render and pipe this on and have that be on the top input and have it be over. So it just kind of have a ghost behind it. Uh, what I did was this uh, feedback, I actually add a edge. And then um, this edge, I lower the level. So you kind of have more of a shape of the line for the feedback. Um, and I like how you can see kind of like the the edge of the line as it goes in and out, um, but maybe that's not a look you want. And finally, after a transform, I'll add a blue, just to give it more of a little glow. Yeah, and here we have it, our audio reactive shape. Let's turn the audio back on. And I hope you enjoy. Uh, feel free to share this. If you post on a social, you can tag the Impact Immersive HQ and my personal handle. I'll put that in the caption below. And till next time. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you like our YouTube content, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. The HQ Pro is the only comprehensive educational resource and community for immersive design, touch designer, and creative tech pros. In the HQ Pro trainings, we cover almost any topic you can think of, and we go way more in depth than we do in our YouTube tutorials. We have a private group where Matthew Reagan, myself, and our other industry veteran and pioneer teachers answer your questions every single day. If that sounds cool, click the link in the description to learn more. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more free touch designer and immersive content.